In this session, we'll do calculation of loads on these walls to design the loads. The walls later on. We'll do <coughs> calculation of W1 till W9, and we just need to keep an eye on the this. This is 10.6, for example, and it includes overhang here and overhang here. These are 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters each. So let's start and you can use this as a template so we have W1 will be composed of the self weight of this floor and the snow load so self weight of the roof plus snow load is equal to so the shelf weight as was suggested <coughs> by Canadian Wood Council the shelf weight of the the roof is, is 0 0.5 kilonewton per square meter uh, this always will be multiplied by the dead load factor which is 1.25 according to the Canadian standard multiplied by the tributary width which is the tributary width will be the distance from here to here and uh, that is 10.6 divided by 2 which is 5.3 plus the snow load <coughs> is whatever the value of snow load here and in this case it is equal to 1.5 kilonewton per square meter multiplied by the factor of snow load which is always 1.5 multiplied by the tributary width in this case the tributary width is same as <coughs> excuse me is 5.3 so we'll do the numbers here is equal to 0 0.5 kilonewton per square meter multiplied by 1.25 multiplied by 5.3 meters plus and we have the tribute the snow load is 1.5 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is 1.5 and the tributary width is 5.3 meters is equal to so w1 is equal to 15.237 kilonewton per meter length now w2 is equal to so w2 <coughs> point two three seven just update these ones now w2 is here so double two two will be composed of this carry on plus the sulfate of the wall these two things this one and this equal to w1 plus sulfate of the wall is equal to so w1 is equal to 15.237 and the self weight of the wall again this value is, is constant or assumed 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is 1.4 always multiplied by the height of the wall is equal to so it is equal to 15.237 plus 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter the factor is 1.4 and the height is 3.75 by 3.75 meters 
is equal to so this is equal to 15.237 plus 2.1 is equal to 17.337 kilonewton per meter length. So I'll highlight these ones and update the sketch with them. So this is uh, 17. Point three three seven. Good. <coughs> <coughs> we'll move to the next page. So So now we'll do the W3. Let's take it back again and look at the sketch here. So W3 here is a value here. This is composed of the scaryon, that is one, then the floor contribution which is half the distance of 5.5 and that is 2.75 meters that is 2 and the cell weight over the wall so I need to keep this in mind so the three elements the carry on and the floor contribution and cell weight of the wall and just keep an eye on the on the tributary width for the floor because the tributary width of the floor is 2.75 half of 5.5 so just keep that in mind and if you want you can also simplify this thing by putting it in the middle here say so the 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 tributary here is 2.75 meters and the tributary here is from both sides is half of 5.5 .5 and half of 4.5 which is 5 meters and the tributary width here is half of 4.5 which is 2.25 meters so just to make our lives a bit easy okay so move to the next page here so we said this is composed of of W2, this is the carry on, plus the floor loads, I would call them because we have uh, dead load and live load, and then the wall self weight is equal to. So W is equal to W2 is equal to 17.337 plus now the floor load we start with the dead load the self weight of the floor itself and that is uh, assumed 1.5 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is 1.25 always multiplied by the tributary width which is in this case the tributary width is I'm just trying to make this as a template so that be easy for you plus the live load which is whatever the live load is multiplied by the factor which is 1.5 always multiplied by the tributary width plus the sulfate of the wall the sulfate of the wall is 0.4 kilonewton per square meter sorry these are constant also so make them blue zero point four kilonewton per square meter the factor is one point four multiplied by the height of the wall is equal to uh, the height of the wall is this is the height of the wall 
which is 4.75 so just keep that in mind so now we'll substitute with the with numbers 17.337 plus 1.5 kilonewton per square meter 1.25 and we say the tributary width in this case is 2.75 meters This is for the dead load. Now the live load is we have two point four kilonewton per square meter, and the factor is one point five. And again, the tributary width is two point seven five meters. That is the floor contribution uh, for the self weight of the wall 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter the factor is 1.4 and the height is like we said 4.75 meters is equal to so w3 is equal to 17.337 plus this is equal to 5.156 and the live load part is equal to 9 and then the self weight is equal to 2.66 is equal to 34.153 that is kilonewton per meter length Okay, so I'll move on to thirty-four. So let's go and update this the sketch again. This is is thirty-four point one five three. Now W four is zero. This is zero. Now for W5 is only the self weight of the wall here. And for W6 it will be the carry on here. I'll do this later on, one at a time. So let's go back to draw calculation. So we said W4 is equal to zero because the trusses are not sitting on this wall at all this interior wall and W5 is only the self weight so self weight of the wall which is equal to 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter the factor is 1.4 multiplied by the height is equal to if you look at the what is equal to is 2.1 okay we'll do one separate time okay w5 is equal to 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter the factor is 1.4 and the height for the first part is equal to is equal to 3.75 3.75 meters is equal to 2.1 kilonewton per meter length now 
we said w6 is equal to w5 the carry on plus the floor load plus the self weight wall self weight as you could so w6 equal to 2.1 now the floor load we start with the the self weight of the floor which is 1.5 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is always 1.25 these are sort of constant in our calculation multiplied by the tributary width now we see the tributary width for the interior is 5 meters we said this is 5 meters, right? so just keep that in mind tributary width we have this curly bracket here because this is floor and this for the live load part is the live load is given here as 2.4 kilonewton per square meter and the factor for live load is constant 1.5 multiplied by the tributary width so that's the floor contribution plus the sulfate of the wall and the sulfate of the wall is equal to 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter factor is 1.4 always multiplied by the height is equal to so W6 is equal to 2.1 plus 1.5 kilonewton per square meter by 1.25 multiply we said tributary width is 5 meters plus live load is 2.4 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is 1.5 tributary, tributary width is 5.5 5 meters plus self weight is 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter multiplied by 1.4 multiplied by the height is equal to 4.75 meters is equal to point one plus the first part is nine point three seven five plus eighteen plus the self rate is equal to two point six six is equal to 32.135 that is kilonewton per meter length okay so you can go and update the, the sketch with these values So this is equal to two point one and six is equal to thirty two point one three five. 
Now we need to take a closer look at before we do W7. So instead of doing W7 here, this W7 is equal to W1 because this truss is carried by this wall and this wall. That's why it is they are equal. So W1 is equal to W7. Now W8 and W2 also are, are equal because if you look at how W2 is calculated, W2 is this carry on plus the self weight, and that is the same here. Carry on, self weight are not changing. So just be careful in test, don't do calculate them again because they are same. So W1 is equal to W7 and W2 is equal to W8. So let's do that. So you have W7 is equal to W1 and is equal to 15.237 kilonewton per meter length. And we said W8 is equal to W2 and whatever the value of W2 is, which is 17.337 newton per meter length so this uh, this were easy now let's do the w9 now you'll see w w9 let's go back to this sketch see w9 here is composed of the carry on here plus the floor contribution plus the self weight of the wall. So let's go back. So W9 is equal to W8. This is the carry on plus the floor loads. plus the wall self weight. So let's detail this. W8 is equal to 17.337 floor load. So I start with the self weight of the floor which is 1.5 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is always 1.25 multiplied by the country by by the tributary with and the tributary width is again I'll let's take a look at it here the tributary width here is is 2.25 this distance one multiplied by and the live load in this case is 2.4 kilonewton per square meter and the factor is always 1.5 multiplied by the tributary width plus the sulfate of the wall which is always 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter the fact has 1.4 multiplied by the height is equal to 17.337 plus uh, 1.5 kilonewton per square meter 1.25 and the tributary width we said is equal to 2.25 meters now the live load 2.4 kilonewton per square meter 
the factor is 1.5 meter 1.5 always the tributary in this case is 2.25 meters and here we have 0 0.4 kilonewton per square meter multiplied by 1.4 and the height is 4.75 meters so w9 is equal to 17337 plus this part is equal to 4.218 and the live load part is 8.1 and the sulfate is equal to 2.66 is equal so the final answer is 32.315 that's kilo newton per meter length. This is the end.